Hi, I'm David Tenorio. Let's go ahead and take a look at a special way to sharpen our charcoal pencils for life drawing. You'll notice that this pencil is sharpened to be very long and very pointed, and there's a very specific reason why. When we buy charcoal pencils, they normally come like this, where we have just a little bit of the charcoal and a little bit of the wood. Now, what can hinder us is that when we're drawing, you know, normally we draw and start drawing kind of with our handwriting hand where we sort of hold it like this. But it's really nice in life drawing to hold your pencil a little bit farther away, so a little bit higher up on the pencil and even a little bit farther from our paper. And when we have the regular pencils, they're harder to use on the side, which is a really important part of what we're gonna talk about with our figure drawings. And so when we have pencils that are sharpened like this, where we take some of the wood away, we show a lot more of the charcoal in there, we can achieve something almost like painting, where we have this really nice quality to the charcoal. We also have the ability to hold it a lot like a paintbrush. It gives us a lot of range of motion, and then we can use it on its side. We can use it on its side to make really light shading. We can use it for making very thin lines, especially when we're just starting out the figure. And then one thing that I love is that with the shading, it can also be very even. So as we use it on its side like this, we can get some really nice even tones of shade. So let's go ahead and show how we sharpen our pencil to be like this. We take a regular pencil and we'll take a box cutter. Now with a box cutter, an X-Acto knife, or even a razor blade, anything like that, you wanna use as little of the blade as possible. You don't need to be too long. Now, what you might assume is that when we look at a pencil like this, we're sort of whittling the wood away. And so you might assume that you just take your pencil, you just take your knife, and you whittle away. But one thing that's really important, both for making the sharpening look nice, and also for our own safety, is the way that we cut the wood away from the pencil. And so what we wanna do is we wanna take our pencil, we wanna hold it pretty firm in our left hand or right hand, depending on which one you prefer, and you have your knife. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my knife or my blade, I'm going to take this thumb, and I never want to actually use my arm to cut. I never want to use my arm to cut the wood away. I just want to hold my arm firm or stiff and use this other hand to just gently push the wood off the pencil. So again, you'll notice that there's no motion like this, because I don't want to break my pencil. I don't want to do something dangerous with my blade. I just hold it really nice and stiff, and then very gently use this other hand to start shaving the wood. I want to shave it pretty even, so that means once I've done a little bit, I'll just gently rotate the pencil and do some more. This is something really nice to do at home, of course, but also when you go to life drawing class, if you attend a life drawing class with a live model, usually at the start of your class, you can sit and sharpen your pencils. And one thing that I like to think about is that this is your time to relax, to kind of get yourself ready for your drawing session. And although sometimes cutting this pencil, shaving the wood, sanding it down, sometimes it can take some time, I think that's a good thing. It gets us to kind of slow down. It's almost meditative. And it gets us ready for looking at our figure and our drawings. So once we've shaved the wood down, you'll notice that in the example one, it's shaved down pretty far. There's a really long point. If you're just starting out with this technique, it's okay if you do just a little bit. So we have here maybe about half an inch to an inch worth of that wedge showing. And that's okay, that's good too. I'm gonna shave just a little bit more of that wood. I'm gonna try to get it even. So again, very slow, just pushing with my other thumb, holding that blade stiff, pushing with my other thumb, really gentle. And again, it's not a race, just take it nice and easy. With some pencils, like these Conte pencils, you might notice a little bit of kind of film on there. Usually that's like a glue, which is a really good sign. That means that that lead is glued into the wood, so it's a nice, strong pencil. Now once you have it down to about here, we can start to sand it. So I'll take our blade, of course we'll put that back in there. Now I have this nitrum sanding paddle, which again I love. It's really cool because it has a lot of surface area. Sometimes in the stores you'll see these smaller 
sanding pads. They're also called a lead pointer. But even if you just have a piece of sandpaper, that's okay too. You can use that as well. And now we're just to the simple part. We take that pencil that we took the wood down from. We take our sanding paddle, whether it's sanding paper or paddle, and we're gonna put it on there and we're gonna start to just rock it back and forth. And while I rock it, what's really cool or important is I want to twist it just a little bit. So I just wanna gently twist it while I'm rocking it. That's like the part with the wood where we wanna evenly sand it down. So again, as I twist it, I rock it back and forth on that sanding paper. So let's go ahead and get a nice point on there. So let's check on that and see how it's coming along. So that's already starting to look pretty nice. Notice that we're starting to just wear down some of that charcoal and get it a little bit pointier. You'll notice on your sandpaper, your sanding block, that you might build up a lot of excess charcoal. And you can, of course, just put that into the trash can. But one thing that's cool too is if you have a container, like a film canister or a plastic container, you could always save some of that charcoal. And that's some really nice stuff that you can use for blending later. So again, I'm just going back and forth and the whole time I'm doing that, I'm very gently twisting the pencil. So I'm going one side to the other and then just very gently rotating it to get that even sharpening. Okay, now look at that. We're starting to get that really nice sharp point. Notice how it's really tapering to a small edge at the very, very end. And then we have a little bit of almost like a belly in the charcoal, meaning there's like a little bit of that round section in the middle there. So we'll sand just a little bit longer to make sure that gets nice and even. Okay, and I think we're good. We got that wood shaved down. We have that nice sharp point. One last thing is before you do any drawing with this, it's a really good idea to take this and on some paper, on a paper towel, just sort of wipe it a little bit because it's gonna have some of that dust on there, that charcoal dust. Although already we can see those really nice marks that it's able to make. So wipe that down a little bit, get some of that charcoal off. Okay, and then let's see how it looks down here. So there we have it, that really nice even tone that we want for our shading. And then also that ability to hold our pencil much farther away, use it on its side for those really nice delicate lines and delicate shapes.